Yes, it is Leicester against Manchester City, which is live and exclusive here on Talk Sports. Sam Matterface and a certain Trevor Sinclair on the commentary team. And tre Trevor joins us this morning to look ahead to this game. Morning to you, Trevor. How are you? Hi, uh, Trevor. Good morning, I say Morning, Cass. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. very well, thank you. Um, yes, it is definitely the biggest game <laughs> it is of the weekend. Yeah. And Trevor, <laughs> tell, tell us, because, you know, I'm obviously I'm not a City fan, but if I ever want to watch a team, and I have this sort of feeling with Leeds, and I've been spoilt with Liverpool over the years, and... I watch City and I just think, wow, they are extraordinary. When they're on, you've got to get them like Man United did on their, and they done a good number. They did a good job on yeah. Man City on the day. But you've got to get them on a bad day to to beat them. And Leicester did that at the Etihad. Yeah, they did, um, and that was early on in the season, obviously, mm. when uh, City weren't on this run. Um, but I think there was a few little things that Pep weren't happy with about the transition in the team when they lost possession and how quickly got, they got back into position. I think that's obviously been appeased and uh, the run that they've been on has been exceptional. Mm -hmm. It's just a joy to watch, you know, forget about being an ex-player, which I am. Uh, as a coach and, and you know, a, a learning coach myself, and I look at the way that he has put so much work into the training ground, analysis, where players need to be, uh, positionally, uh, the formation and, and, and the triggers all over the pitch, whether in position, out of possession. It's just a joy to watch. And it's mm. mind blowing the amount of work that Pep's put into them players and how much them players have, have taken on board all the, all the information that he's tried to give to them and teach them. Well, I was saying earlier, Trevor, that, you know, obviously there's the link of Haaland available in all these clubs. And, I was, and mm. I've said this for months. I said, I'm not sure really it matters to City because, no. like you said, the tr they trigger attacks from everywhere. It's not a basis of we get centre forward and we just give him chances because it's built on so much more than that. It is, Cass, and um, you're right. I I'm not so sure they will. I mean, listen, you know, if it, it, it was uh, Disney, uh, we'd get Haaland and the fans could, you know, um, lord over him, he'd score 40 goals a season and everyone would be happy. But I don't think that's as easy as the way it's going to go. And... You know, even you're looking at Manchester City, when I started looking at Barcelona as a as a, a concept or as a mm -hmm. philosophy um, and the work that Johan Cruyff did and Bobby Robson and all the rest of it. And one of the things that I learned early doors was there was a massive connection between that football and the five-a-side football uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, 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 uh, sorry, in um, Spain. And they had at the time, and I think this was, must have been about 10 years ago, about 40 triggers for set like different set patterns of play now when you look at Manchester City and the ball goes with Edison you understand why Edison's got to be so competent with his feet because it's a trigger for certain, lots of different movements and uh, one of the movements we've seen happen so often is Cancelo comes into that number four position either Diaz or Stones comes out to the right back position and they end up being a back three now if you're a, a, a team playing against that how do you deal with that because all of a sudden you've got six midfielders possibly more because um, like, they might even not have a striker. So you've got six or seven players in the middle of the park which are rotating to get on the ball. And if you've got four in there, it's a huge part of the pitch to play six against four. And you're not going to win the ball back, especially with how good the Manchester City midfielders uh, are with the ball at the feet. And they've got out balls with the defence and, and Edison. So you understand then why teams in the end decide not to press because it's almost impossible to win the ball back unless you're going to be really risky and leave too many defenders, uh, leave too little defenders uh, in your own half. So it's just really intriguing to see how he's evolved the game in, in this country. You know, we talk about goalkeepers and how they've started, like all goalkeepers, even going down the leagues when really they shouldn't be because not being arrogant, but they haven't got the quality of pitch to be able to get the consistency of pass and first touch and all the rest of it. In the top divisions, you can understand why they do it. Um, but yeah, he's 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 taken our game forward quite a lot, and uh, it's it's pleasing to see that a lot of teams down the leagues are trying to play fo like total football. Let's focus on on Leicester, shall we? Because because um, we've not mentioned them. No, we haven't. <laughs> it's it's all been about Manchester City right now. Um, but there was a. You know, James Madison, Harvey Barnes, they, they suffered injuries lately, although I think James Madison is, is getting himself back into contention now. Mm. Um, their, their top four ambitions, Leicester, could well have been derailed with injuries to those key personnel. Yeah. But what Brendan Rodgers has seemed to have done is, is sort of brought in Kelechi and Nacho to play as a, a front two now yeah. along Jamie Vardy. How impressed have you been with Nacho, who is the Premier League Player of the Month, we should say, for, for well, March? And a City boy, ex-City boy. Yeah, yeah ex-City player. Um, I'm 
I'm really pleased for him because it has been difficult playing behind Vardy. The chances that he gets are very limited um, because Vardy's been so consistent and so good. I've been impressed with Brendan Rodgers again. You know, I mentioned it a couple of years ago, Natalie. I think he's probably the, the the most similar British coach we've got to Pep Guardiola. And, you know, the fact that he's changed to a three at the back because he realises that he's not got certain key elements of his side available through injury. Harvey Barnes has been excellent. Madison's been superb when he's played. And Madison's numbers, are, actually both their numbers have started to improve massively this season when it comes to creativity, assists and goals. He's not got them in the team, so he's looked at what he could do with the group of players that he's done and he's come to uh, the realisation that he needs to play a three at the back, four in midfield and then an inverted three at the top, so Perez is in behind Ineacio and Vardy and it's worked superb. Again, Mm. due diligence, attention to detail, doing the work necessary so the players understand where they need to be in and out of possession in certain scenarios on the pitch, depending on where the ball is. Um, been massively impressed with Fafana how he's come back from injury Evans has been rock solid so you've got you know three mobile players Evans maybe not so much but he reads the game so well with the amount of experience he's got so you've got a great base there and obviously Casper Schmeichel has been so consistent used to be my boot boy at Manchester City in the career that he's had (laughs) you know step big ass to step out the shadow of you know a a person like Peter Schmeichel but he's done that and winning the title and you know I think I think Leicester fancy trying to nick second off Manchester City they're only a point behind Mm. and the way that they fell away last season um, I think they would have learned something something from that and they've had a big meeting it's been quite well documented and I feel they feel if they can get over the line and get second this season, it'll be almost like top because, you know, City are miles, miles ahead of everyone else because of the strength of their, and depth yeah. in their squad. And uh, and on all that, I was just going to say, Trevor, that start of the season, Leicester had as bad an injury list as anybody, yeah. certainly defensively. They're nearly a whole back line out. You know, yeah. so they, and they've still, I mean, I mean, tell us that the City game... Uh, at the Etihad where they won 5-2. Yeah. What did they do that day that stuck out for you that City couldn't manage? Well, they were, they were very patient, I thought, out of possession. But when they won the ball, ball back, they were lightning quick. And when you've got a player like Vardy in the side, Harvey Barnes is full of running. Um, you've got players that can hurt you. And I've always thought the way that Manchester City play so expansive, their biggest weakness is on transition. As soon as they lose possession, if you can get the ball into a, you know, in, into a, a player with speed like Vardy or into a player like Harry Kane who, who's going to fight to hold it up and, and, and bring players like Son who run on behind, beyond him, I think that is their weakness. And it, it's, not, it's, not, you know, it's not a difficult one to work out. It's just that the quality of that first pass when you win the ball back has got to be great. So the ball over the top for Vardy, it's got to be something that he's, he's got a chance of getting. And the ball into, a, say, a hold-up focal player like Kane has got to be something that he can get hold of. But if you get that first pass out, they're so expansive and they're so out of position and in poor positions to defend their own goal that you can really hurt Manchester City. And, and Leicester did that superbly well. And again, you know, it's pointing out the, the, the importance of that it comes down to the manager. And Brendan Rodgers has obviously schooled his team into realising where their weakness is. And when they can hurt Manchester City, and they did that superbly well, and they looked so good on the break. Some poor defending after admit by Manchester City on the day as well. But get, goals change games, as you know, Cass, and a few heads went in the Manchester City side that day. Um, some di- ill discipline, some kind of um, players who, for me, looked like they'd, they'd thrown the towel in. And uh, yeah, that would have been a difficult discussion in that changing room afterwards for, Man- for Manchester City and Pep. And interesting, of course, it's a slightly different defensive lineup for, for Manchester City now. Slightly John Stones being yeah. brought in, and it's, it's all very much changed since since those that day that day in uh, September. And interestingly, you should just point out you were saying there, Trevor, uh, about Leicester wanting to finish second. Well, yeah. their three final games of the season could well be play a huge part in that because they're playing Manchester United, Chelsea, and Spurs as well. So a really you interesting are so, final. Three. So professional, <laughs> aren't I? Just I'm so pleased you said I, that. You've actually well, stole my line because I wanted to. Uh, if they were going to they were going to do that, they're going to have to earn it because of the last few years. Well, I, I didn't even know Trevor. <laughs> but let me just say, Trevor, yeah. that you mentioned that this for you is arguably the biggest game of the day. Well, I'll tell you, you are wrong because the biggest game of the day is Huddersfield against Brentford. Thank you oh, yeah. very much. All right, I was wondering when you were going to bring it back round to Brentford. As you mentioned, Ivan Tony earlier, and I was thinking, does Hello. she? Uh, we were talking about Premier League strikers here, and Ivan Tony comes into the conversation. Hold and I'm thinking, I think Natalie, won. you're ob- obsessed. Uh, Trevor, she said to me. <laughs> before mention Ivan Tony just and then keep, I could just keep bringing up Brentford. Talk Brentford. Uh, keep bringing up Brentford. No, that's not what happened at all. But yeah. anyway, Trevor, as I say, you're part of the commentary team then for this one at the King Power. It's Leicester against Manchester City. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, My Trevor. pleasure. Safe Thanks, travels guys. to the game as well.